With his faithful valet, Cato, Britt Reed, daring young publisher, matches wits with the underworld, risking his life that criminals and racketeers within the law may feel its weight by the sting of the Green Hornet. Ride with Britt Reed as he races toward another thrilling adventure. The Green Hornet strikes again. Hurry, Cato! Here's where we smash the writer's wagon! Dictionary on the table. Uh, thanks. Will you stop muffling up the desk expert? They are the brown back books. Oh, I'm getting it. But you got it buried under all them papers. You had ought to be tidy, Casey. Around the Daily Sentinel? Yeah, but this ain't the city room, Casey. It's okay for the reporters to have floppy desks. But you're Brick Reed's secretary. And, and I'm you'll... up to my ears and work. I haven't time to clear my desk. Oh, then leave me help you. I'll file them papers away for you. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Uh, there. Excellent. Huh? You big lug, why put them in the wastebasket? Well, golly, Casey, you said five of them. And you I... dumped them in the wastebasket. Oh, you idiot, those letters are to be saved. Now get them out. So for a sake, Casey, ain't you read them already? Get them out. Okay, okay, keep your shirt on. There. There you are. But golly, I can't figure out what for you want to keep them. Well, me. you let me get on with my work. Now, there's your dictionary. Here, go on, look up your word and stop bothering me. Okay, if you don't appreciate what I... A. Abba. Cicat. Cicat. E. C. C. H. 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 I. K. 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 He's driving me crazy, Larry. I'm looking up a word in the dictionary. This one ain't no good. It ain't got all the alphabet. But if you've mussed the dictionary up, too, I... I can't find the letter G. G? Yeah, like in G whiz. Oh, give me that. <laughs> What's the word? We'll tell you what it means. Uh, it's, uh, G-E-N-I-U-S. Genius. Genius? Here, it's in the letter I got. <laughs> is that the word genius? Genius. Does it mean something good? A genius expert is a very exceptional person, a very brainy person. Yeah? <laughs> Holy crow, I guess them guys know what they're talking about, Casey. That's what they call me, a genius. What? Casey, I'm going to be a successful writer. What on earth are you talking about? <laughs> Wait a minute, Casey. Get a load of this. What? <laughs> expert, he's falling for that author racket. What are you talking about? Get away, I want to read some of this to Casey. Listen, Casey, I quote, Dear Mr. Axford, we have received your short story, and it's excellent. Story? You quiet, and it's excellent. You have a genius for writing about real life. Ain't that something? It needs polishing by a skilled collaborator. Just send $25 as our fee for expert aid in polishing up this story, and we can absolutely guarantee publication of your story entitled... Michael, Michael Axford and the Green Hornet. <laughs> Are you genius? Michael Axford and the Green Hornet. Charlie, I guess you'll act more polite to me now I'm a writer. I beg your pardon. I, I should have said Mr. Genius. They're going to publish it, too. I sent them the $25. You sent it? Uh, and what did they send you? Huh? Didn't they pay you anything for the story? Pay me for the... Oh, golly, I forgot all about that. And look at the name. The Ryder Cross Writers Bureau. Ryder Cross? Oh, good grief, Axford. Have you been made a sucker by those racketeers? Racketeers? What are you talking about? Axford, don't you ever read the papers? Sure I read Yeah, them. yeah, the sports page and the funny section. Why don't you look on the feature page once in a while? The boss has been running a series on rackets. But have you read it? Huh, I, I, well, there uh... was an article in only yesterday about the writing bureau racket. You mean these guys is crooks? Axford, when you see an ad for amateur writers, that's okay. It's probably an honest outfit on the level. But when they advertise that they can guarantee publication, then look out. You've been hooked, Dex. You and thousands of others all over the country. Charlie, where's Reed, Casey? I got to tell him. Mr. Reed already knows that, sir. Didn't he print the article on the racket? But I've been took. And besides, he's out. He's at the Civic Club having lunch. I want to see the publisher. 
Oh, I'm sorry you isn't in right now. What's it about? Perhaps I can help you. I'm Mr. Reed's secretary. It's this, this disgraceful article in yesterday's paper. Yeah? Which one? This one right here. Calling attention to a, a racket in writing bureaus. What about it? How dare he call my business a racket? Your business? I've come to protest. My name is Ryder, and my business is entirely within the law. What? What did you say your name was? Why, uh... Did you say Ryder? Oh, yes. Yes, what of it? I got a letter here. Go on, take a look at it. A letter? I don't understand. Hey, this is the one. I don't see what this has to do with... Why, it's um, my firm. To me, you crook. So you got my 25 bucks, huh? Now, now, just a minute. You guarantee publication, huh? Why, yes, yes, of course. We have our own magazine. Slowly. Would you hold me hot? A pleasure, Casey. Watch that to be caught, will you? Why, uh, you're rolling up your sleeve now. Now, just a moment, I... Swindle me out of 25 bucks, will you? Now, wait, hold him. He's going to hit me. Thank God to get back me door right now. Stop, boy. There's the door, mister. Stop him. Stop him. You better get going, Mr. Ryder. He's got blood in his eyes. <laughs> you got your head start? Now I'm coming after you. So when I catch up with you, I... <laughs> well, look at them go. <laughs> Who's the head? It's Bill Ryder's race. He's holding his own. There he goes for the elevator. Oh, gosh, Casey, if the boss could only hear about this. Why not? I'll call him up. <laughs> look at him go. Heading for the stairs now. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Fully Reed, something you heard on the phone? <laughs> well, that was my secretary. You know, you met Axford Tompkins? What's he done now? Well, he was taken in on a writing jaw racket. He tried to get his money out of the rocketeer's hide. <laughs> <laughs> You'd better look out. He's at to face a charge for something better. Eh? <laughs> okay, from the description, I don't think Axford will catch this man. Axford Tompkins, he's no gray on for speed. <laughs> but seriously, Tompkins, this fits right in with our talk, dude. Eh? Now, this man's name is Ryder. You ever hear of him? Ever. He runs a writing bureau that's foolproof. I gather he didn't like the Stubnall's article. I think that article was 12. Look, I'm an author. A fairly well-established author. That's why I suggested this lunch. Yes, I've been taken in by a dip outfits like writers myself. Well, I can afford to be a sucker for a racket once in a while, but uh, it still is over. Do many people fall for it? Read most of them are poor people. Desperately in need of jobs. At the last resort, they try their hand at writing. Couldn't be surprised how many. And these racketeers take them for all they can. Squeeze them dry. Fees for polishing up. Fees for collaboration. Yeah, but take this writer cross up that they guarantee publication. How can they do that? Because they do publish themselves. They have a magazine. They publish? They cut each story down to about ten lines, cost them only a few pennies, but that's still publication. Uh, do they uh, copyright their magazine? What? Oh, nothing special. I just wonder. By the way, you mentioned that you save all your old manuscripts. Yes, I do. Everything that I ever had printed, way back to my first short story. Got a library full of them. Are they that good? Well, from it, as a matter of fact, some were pretty bad. Uh, it's too bad the law can't do anything about these records. Here. It's just it. Good Lord, I didn't notice the time. You'll have to excuse me, Thompson. Uh, going back to Central Reed? Uh, no, I have a little business to attend to in my park. Mr. Tompkins? Well, I've been to his house many times. I know exactly where his library is. Cato, I've gone into this pretty thoroughly. There's only one way to crack those racketeers. They put a shell around them, even the law can't break through. That is so, Mr. Ed. Every mail brings more suckers into their mill. More money obtained by holding out fake promises to people who have no business wasting what little they have. This is the only way, Cato. Mr. Ed. No use bringing up all the objections, Cato. I realize them as well as you do. If the law can't smash these crooks, that puts it squarely up to the Green Hornet. But, Miss Green Hornet's done on the police records for every crime there is. Robbery, arson, the whole book, including murder. That is not true. But who knows that it isn't true? Just the two of us, Kato. You and I alone know that the Green Hornet has never murdered. Just as you and I alone know that I'm the Green Hornet. Yes, sir. You took care of running the post office box so that we can't be connected with it? Yes, Miss Bates. There's a number. Let's see. Post office box 32, Central Annex. Fine. That's the return address writer and cross they're going to use to communicate with me. I don't understand. I'm going to be another sucker on their list, Cato. Not under my real name, of course, nor as the Green Hornet. No? No, oh, we'll use an entirely different name when I send them a short story. You going to write a story, Mr. Bear? <laughs> that won't be necessary, Cato. 
We're going to use a story that's already been written. But Ryder and Cross won't know that until it's too late. Got the hornet mask and the gas weapon. We're going out in the Black Beauty. Britt Reed opened a secret panel behind his clothes press. Followed by Cato, his valet led the way along a narrow passage built within the apartment house wall, which connected directly with an adjoining building. Supposedly abandoned, this building served as the hiding place of the Black Beauty, super streamlined car of the Green Hornet. You have the Green Hornet weapon, Cato? Yeah. I'll take it along just in case we run up against trouble. I'm hoping we don't have any. How about the car? It's ready. Fine. Left to wear gloves. I don't want our fingerprints found in Tompkins' library. That's why we're going? You wait outside in the Black Beauty in the alley. Yeah, let's go. Plenty late enough so that the darkness will cover us. You take the wheel, Cato. Yes, Mr. Bitt. Okay, step on it. It's time for the Green Hornet to move out. Two more blocks, Mr. Bitt. Run off the supercharger, Cato. The next corner, Cato. Turn right. Hey, well. That's it. I went to the alley. No, left this time. Yeah, here. Good enough. Stop here. Yeah, I've been Tompkins' guest often enough to find my way into his library blindfolded. But I'm going to have a look around when I get inside. Give me the pencil flashlight, Cato. You see that house? Mr. Tompkins lived there? I'm going in that window nearest us. That's the library. There are lights on in the front of the house. That's where Tompkins is now. If the light comes on in the library window, get out and get out fast. You understand? No, I will not. I mean, I've been spot. Did you say no, kiddo? I will not leave you. You'll go as fast as the black beauty can take you. If I'm trapped, at least you'll be in the clear. Mr. Bates, There's no I... time for argument, kiddo. Remember my instructions. Tompkins? My editor said maybe you'd have a follow-up on this writing your racket. No, I told your publisher, Britt Reed, all I knew at lunch. These guys, Ryder and Cross, for instance, do you know anything about... I wish I could help, but there's nothing we can do that the law can. Yeah, that means nothing at all. Those crooks thick inside the law. Yes. Uh, did you hear something? Well, then what's the matter? Mr. Tompkins, what happened? Were you in the library just now? Library? No. Well, I had the funniest feeling as I walked past. It was... Well, is Have it... you heard something? I don't think I imagine it. There's nothing in the lab, really. It's just piled high with old manuscripts. Which way is it? Do you think it's... I don't know. Let's find out. Back of the house, isn't it? We can do on the list. Be careful. Here we are, Al. Hold on. What is it? There. Under the footsteps. There it will. Get back. Now, open the door, Thompson. Empty. Where are the lights? I'll get them. Ah, it's empty, all right. Looks the same. Nothing's been disturbed. Look at that window, huh? It wasn't open before, I swear. Look. Open back the alley. Tell him I told you to stay out. Look, it's a car. Yeah, you're right, Mrs. Thompson. Holy mackerel. Thompson, give me your phone. That's the car of the Green Hornet. I've seen it plenty of times. The Green Hornet was at Tompkins last night. Maybe your eyes need attention, Larry. Uh, what's the idea of killing my story? What story? What story? I... 
Donegan, you ought to retire. And besides, it was Reed's order. Huh? He told me to keep it covered. Here he is. You can ask him yourself. What's the trouble, Donegan? Hey, boss, Donegan says you blew plenty of that story. Yes, I did, Laurie. But why? The Green Hornet was there. Donegan I... told me what you thought, but after all, it's a shot in the dark, isn't it? Well, you don't know more than a glimpse of the car, did you? Well, it, it was. And there were none the of the usual evidences of a hornet call, were there? Usual thing. Oh, a hornet sticker, a note of some kind? No, there weren't. Did, uh, uh, did Tompkins find anything missing, Lawrence? Not a thing, Mr. Reed. Not yet. Not yet. But he's checking through his library now to find out. Yeah? Yeah, but that'll take him a month, maybe. He's got four walls crammed solid with old manuscripts. I see. Larry, you want to stop building page one yarns out of guesses. I sent you over to see Tompkins for a follow-up on a racket. Why didn't you stick to it? Okay, okay, but get this, Gunnigan. I'm going over to help Tompkins check up. And when we find something missing, I'll shove it down your throat. <laughs> well, is he burning up, Reed? You may be right, Gunnigan. We might as well be sure before we print it. Mind if I use your phone, Gunnigan? Of course not, Reed. I'm calling my pal at Cato. He had a little mailing to do for me, and I want to check up. Uh, Cato, did you mail that package? Mr. Brett? Yes, I'm calling from the Sentinel. It's Melton. I thought so, but I wanted to check. It's rather important that it got to those people as soon as possible. Right across right of you is doing better and better each day, Mr. Ryder. Look at the mail this afternoon. I hope the out-of-town newspapers don't pick up that article the Daily Sentinel had on our business. As much as labeled it a racket. Let them label. They mention no name. It's Britt Reed, the publisher. You know what his bodyguard almost did to me? Lucky for you, he cooled off. Lucky for me? Lucky for the Sentinel, you mean. I've gotten a warrant for assault and battery. The suit for plenty. And collected? And collected. From Reed. He employs this man, bodyguard. I'm telling you, Cross, if Reed persists in using his newspaper as a platform to talk against us, he may need a bodyguard. The mail hasn't suffered. We're still getting a lot of out-of-town manuscripts. How about the money? It's coming in. But here, there's a manuscript that doesn't come from out of town. It's right here in the city. Yes? Oh, it's odd. Odd? There's no return address. Hmm? Well, I mean no regular address. Here, look for yourself. Oh, I see. Just a post office box. Well, that's as good a place to get money as any other. We'll send the regular come-on note and wait for the money to fall in our lap. Yes, we ought to read the manuscript. Just okay. <laughs> read this junk. There'll be an idiot cross. Well, after that money, why wade through a lot of trash? I just take this letter. Mr. Uh, what's his name? Green. To Mr. Green. Post office, box 32. Central Annex Station. Dear Mr. Green. We have received your short story. And it is excellent. You have a... Uh, Genius for writing about real life. Got that? Go ahead. It needs polishing by a skilled collaborator. Just spend twenty-five dollars as our fee for extra day. $25 is our fee for expert aid in polishing up this story. Just like Mr. Oxford And yeah. we can absolutely guarantee publication of this story. Yes, it looks exactly like the letter Oxford got from these racketeers. You got it from the post office box this afternoon? Yes, sir. Fine. They're nibbling at the hook, kiddo. Now we're going to bait the hook. Here's $25. What is this for, Mr. Bates? We're sending it to the Writer Cross Writing Bureau. I want to make absolutely certain this particular story does get published. Rider. Money order? $25 for Mr. Green, Post Office Box 32, Central Annex. And a note saying he hopes we'll fix it up for him so it will be published. <laughs> Certainly it'll get published. We'll cut it down to half a page. Check him off his page and condense his manuscript of the others to be run off in the mimeograph. When we guarantee publication, we mean just that. Yeah, but no one ever sees our mimeograph magazine. Well, they can if they want to, Cross. They can if they want to. <laughs> We don't say they'll get paid for publication, do we? <laughs> do we? <laughs> hey, Casey. Hold on a 
a minute, will you? What's the matter, Axford? You're all abreast. I got to see Reed. He's in, ain't he? Oh, wait a minute, Axford. Now get to one side. I got something to show him. You can't go in there. Golly, will you stop? I tell you I want to see Reed before I see me lawyer. Your lawyer? I'm going to sue them crooks for all I can get. Who? Well, who do you think? Right on cross, that's who. By gravy, I'll get even with him for some time. Hey, what's all the noise about? Oh, it's Axford. Blowing off steam again, Mr. Reed. Reed. Will you take a peek at this? He's planning a lawsuit. Well, if you're waving, Axford, I can't look at it until you hold it still. Them crooks ain't got no right to publish my story. Well, what's this, a magazine? I don't call that much of a magazine, Mr. Reed. It's a bunch of mimeographed pages. It's been copyrighted in this case. Here's the mark. Oh, yes, and here's the story. Uh, Michael Axford and the Green Hornet. Will you look what they've done to it? If you're thinking of suing Axford, give up the idea. You gave him the right to publish. But, Reed, holy crow, the story I sent was 15 pages long. They chopped it into bits. It's only 12 lines long now. Well, it's still your story, actually. What they've done is known as editing. But golly, it's right. your pride that hurt. Are you sure it is yours? Boy, Casey, I... I... Yes, it's your story in this case. Even in a suit for plagiarism, all you need is some similarity in title and theme. If one line is identical, that's enough. Oh, Blin Snake, I'm going to see a lawyer. Do you any good, actually? Just grin and bear it. You uh, didn't buy this on the newsstand. That thing? No. You see, Reed... I went up to get my 25 bucks back from Ryder and Cross. And then... And instead of getting the money, you came out with it. Golly, Reed, that crook Ryder is a slick talker. I was told to poke him once. So did he start talking? He told you your story was public? How did you know that? The usual procedure. And you were so puffed up with pride, it took you an hour to figure out you'd been cheated. But, golly, Reed, what am I going to do? Don't them crooks have to pay for using my story? Hey, you're out of luck, Axford. They do not. Hey, boss! I told you I was right in the first place. What about, Larry? About the Hornet. He was at Thompson's house that night. What? Holy crow, you fool. He took a manuscript, and don't ask me why, boy. A manuscript? The Hornet? Absolutely. Here's the name of the manuscript that was missing. And here's the Hornet seal that was left in its place. Is it genuine, Reed? Yes. The safe? Yes, Mr. Reed. Get Gunnigan on the phone. I'm a... oh, never mind. I'll get him on the picture for myself. Gunnigan? Gunnigan, Reed talking. Yeah, Reed. What's up? Lowry brought in proof of his story. What? You mean the Hornet? Well, the Hornet was there, all right. He left the field. What for? What do you want? Lowry's coming in now with a detail. You're too, Lowry. I'm on my way. Lowry at the manuscript. Tompkins and Lowry just discovered it. A manuscript? That's right. Slap it on page one. It's a big mystery. You play up that angle. Mystery. Get it in the early edition so it'll hit the streets around 9 o'clock tonight. Let's see why the Hornet took an apparently worthless manuscript. Magazine? Yes, yeah, a magazine printed by Ryder and Crawford. Hello? Reed, this is Tompkins. I got a tip about that man who slipped green water stool. A tip? From home? I don't know, Reed. But your bodyguard actually had a magazine. He's here now. Reed, that story is printed in the magazine. It's condensed almost to nothing, but it's my story. The magazine Ryder and Cross put out? I can sue them, Reed. Tompkins, listen. Get over to Ryder's office now. I'll meet you there. That was it, Tato. Now, hurry, we've got to get to those racketeers ahead of Tompkins. Get the black duty. Well, you calm down. You're not talking sense. No. Well, maybe this makes sense. Here, look at the title of that story. Forever and a day. Well, what about it? Doesn't that title sound familiar? Why should it? Tompkins is a famous author now. This was evidently one of his early. Forever and a Cross. Yeah, you're waking up. Is that the name of the story we published in our magazine? Here it is. Right here. Forever and a... Oh, but Cross, we only used ten sentences, not the whole story. We had to do that. Otherwise, it costs us more than it's worth to print the magazine. It'll cost us plenty if they find out. We can be sued for plagiarism. Why didn't we check this story? Check it? We never bothered to check anything that comes from a structure like this. Like this, this man's dream? What the... Who are you? Where'd you come from? To the door. You are busy. What is this? That mask. 
Oh. You're the you Don't move, Ryder. Get your hand away from that drawer. Yes, I'll take that gun. Get back there, tell you. Ryder, look out. I said I owe you. Break it. That's better. Oh, my wrist. Next time, it won't be your wrist, Ryder. Why, you're here. There's no money. You have money in the bank, Ryder. You're going to pay out. What do you mean? When I came in, you seemed disturbed about something. That story in the paper, eh? How'd we get that manuscript? I sent it. What? You? Stand back or I'll pull this trigger. Oh, God! Don't shoot. Oh, Ryder, I'm not moving. I sent you that manuscript under the name Green. You know what's going to happen if Tompkins finds out that you published it? No, we don't. Don't lie, you do know. That Tompkins story, he owns the copyright. No one can publish it without his permission. Listen, Hall, if you engineer Tompkins this. can sue you for plenty for stealing his story. For plagiarism. But you sent us that story. I advise you to get rid of your copies of that magazine before it's too late. Right, there's, there's someone coming up the wall. You can stay to work on them. I'm leaving. Wait, Hall, listen. This is... I'm going out the back way, Ryder, and don't follow me. Let him go, Ryder. Turn this stuff. Yeah, hurry, get him out. Get him right back or something. Through this door. Get ready. I'm waiting, Fred. Here, Cato. Take the green water mask and the gas oven. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Touch inside. Yeah, with Lowry and Ike. They're expecting me to show up, Cato. You have the mask and the gun with the green hornet. Now get out of here. I'm going back inside as Brett Reed. idea we were using your story, Mr. Tompkins. You published it and I'm going to sue. Yeah, and you'll get plenty for it. But it was the Green Hornet. We just a moment. Mr. Reed, this is... got here a little late, Tompkins. Yes, Reed. But not too late to get the drift of what's going on. Ryder, you and this woman have been running a bare-faced swindle. A racket that couldn't be stopped by the law. You can't do this to me. It's, it's... it's entirely within the law. You used the law, and now by some accident, the law can be used to ruin you. Golly, did that tell him? Well, I tell you, the Green Hornet sent that story in. We didn't have a... Maybe he did, and maybe he didn't, mister. You think we stole that story? Oh, what do you cross? Okay, you've got us. You can sue us for plenty. For plenty. For sure. Just as well you admit it, Ryder. Right, eh? Then let me tell you, Chisler, something. The money I win from you is going back to the people you stole from. You're not getting me a court out. Come out of here. Look out, he's got a gun. Come back, I'm leaving. Look out! One side action, watch the gun. Ah. Oh. Wow, boss, you sure clipped him. I'll make a light. What are you waiting for, Harry? There's a phone. Get this story in the Daily Sentinel. This racket's lit. Oh. 